to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Destiny can be aborted. Keys. Let me give you the keys now. I'm going to give you six of them. Then I will teach on something very, very powerful that I believe is an explanation to many people's seasons in destiny. And then we'll pray. If God is blessing you already, say amen. amen. Before I continue, I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, I'm still available. If for any reason something about my life is beginning to make you rethink your confidence about me, I am asking, oh God, that I am still available. By your mercy, I am still available. Someone pray, I am still available. I am still available. I am still available. I still can be trusted. For someone, you may be praying and say, Lord, in spite of everything, wasting my time and wasting my years i am still available may your mercy still give me a chance to life lord if you're healing someone in this nation don't do it without me don't do it without me lord if you're lifting someone in this nation don't do it without me ah. don't do it without me lord if you're raising someone in this nation don't do it without me Is someone still praying one minute you are laying your hands on your head and say father nothing will take my place in life i will not stand to watch another person fulfill my assignment because of unfaithfulness because of carelessness i intend to fulfill that which is in the volume of the book for me in the name of jesus the son of the living god please sit down and write lend your destiny your attention now i want to give you six keys really about seven number one are you ready the first key if you want to fulfill your glorious destiny in christ the first non-negotiable key is discovery you have to discover and find your place you must find your place and you must be very aware of god's prophetic blueprint for your life hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 let's walk with a few scriptures media let's walk together hebrews 10 7 lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god so where do you find where it was written concerning you in the volume of the book apostle where do i find it it is written concerning you in the volume of the book if you throw away the book You've thrown away the revelation of your destiny too. You throw away the book. You throw away the revelation of your destiny. Where do we find our destinies in Christ? It is in the volume of the book. Are we together? Very powerful. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2. 
Proverbs 25 and verse 2. Let's read it together. Very powerful scripture. Ready? One to read. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. Everybody say search out. Mm, that it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. How do I find my destiny? Search it out. You search it out with scripture. This is very powerful. There are three principal channels as revealed from scripture that reveal our place of destiny and purpose in life. There are many but three principles. Number one, the word of God, like I said, the volume of the book, the word of God. Number two, your abilities and your giftings. Please write it down. Your abilities and your giftings are pointers to your purpose and point us to your destiny your abilities and your giftings and can i be sincere with you every time you do not connect your gift and your ability to purpose satan is going to use it everybody you see who satan is using mightily it is god's gift in that person satan is using it's not like satan gave the person the gift satan found a very effective tool in the life of that person but not connected to purpose generally speaking you see anything that is not connected to purpose does not have value in itself the value of anything is with respect to its connection to purpose and destiny so just obtaining things and not connecting them to purpose will only be acquisitions that will lead to futility it must be connected to purpose is someone learning you find your place in destiny number one from the word of god you find your place in destiny number two by examining your abilities and your giftings there's something god has put from within your spirit that should be used david your ability to sling and to throw the sling with uncanny mastery is not just a a hobby uh -uh. The, the courage is giving you to be able to tear the lion and the bear is not for nothing your music acumen the ability to be able to sing keep it because one day you will write psalms and hymns and even spiritual songs listen you must make a commitment tonight that everything God has put within me, I must identify it. It is amazing how that so many people have not taken the time to carefully and gratefully search out the many valuable abilities and giftings that God has put within their spirit. Anytime you do not discover your giftings and the things that are valuable within you, you know what Satan will do? He would make you feel less of yourself and you will begin to admire people that you do not even have, who do not even have the, the components of value that is within you. There is nobody who does not have an ability from God. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Very powerful. One of our one of our little ones came the other time i think i was teaching in school of ministry and something very interesting happened the young lady came to me and she came and tapped me and said that they were listening to my message and she told my she told her mother that apostle is not pronouncing purpose well that is purpose not purpose i was watching the girl i said oh dear you see now my mind i said all right so may god raise her to become a public speaker or become a woman of god i mean she's already there if at that age so she came and she was trying to she was trying to correct me to let me know that this is how they pronounce it properly i said ah these are the people who went to school now <laughs> are we together let me tell you where most of you buried your giftings it came because of the tragedy of your foundation did you hear what I said? The tragedy of an inaccurate foundation. Some of the giftings that were finding expression, it was the Holy Spirit revealing them to let those around us know that this noise-making ability is not just talkativeness. There is something in it. It's been mismanaged. But this is a baby revealing something. 
there were children with different abilities that if parents had the discernment to identify did you know that is the awareness of these giftings that should help the parents direct the children eventually on what they should study or become unfortunately many people bury their gifts to be able to honor the desire of parents and i'm saying this respectfully so there are people who are wallowing in destiny with certificates and degrees and several qualifications and there is nothing in it that is related to purpose and destiny some of the people you see that excel even academically in many cases those people found themselves either by favor or just pure luck practicing and studying things that are in sync with the abilities that are within them so it's like a fish swimming in water but there are people who are birds but they've suffocated you in water and say you must stay there some of you the pain of your childhood some of you all kinds of things that have happened to you poverty suffering has buried away potentials but in the name of jesus if lazarus could come forth i speak to that dormant gift i speak to that ability that man of god that prophetess that entrepreneur that leader joseph that king that queen in the name of jesus you must come back to life now you must come back to life now please sit down only God knows how many authors are dead within you who should write books that will mentor nations. Only God knows how many people, potentials locked up. Some of us, because of our backgrounds, someone, some person, somewhere, even if well intentioned, continue to minister to you that you do not have the power to become that which god has designed for you and you believed it some of us respectfully speaking the kinds of schools we went to and the teachers around us they used maybe your academic gradings and they began to call you names that made you to permanently bury your giftings can i tell you your giftings and your abilities a gentleman last week i think he was and I've received so many, I don't know how many of my photos, they do portraits, they do all kinds of things with my photos. And, and I'm so grateful for the people who are thoughtful to have done that. And a gentleman, he came in, I think, from Kaduna State. I was just praying for people here. And then this guy, I think it's almost the size of this, this, this uh, pulpit. Very beautiful. He, he drew it with his hand. And I mean, you, it's, it's about... It should be it should be arguably one of the best portraits of myself that I've seen and yet this guy just presented it to me and I said my God and there are many 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 people who will pay millions of naira to someone if they can find a person who does this but you will be surprised almost all the people within that person's family they just know that he's carelessly doing something do you know let me tell you africa we must wake up the 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 spirit that makes us to destroy great visions at infancy i curse that spirit in jesus name <laughs> hallelujah discovery so number one the word of god helps you to discover your place your purpose your destiny number two your abilities and your giftings inherent abilities write them down know them number three service one of the most powerful channels and platforms to find your place in destiny is service even service in the house of god there are many people today who may not really know what it is that is within them until service gives them an opportunity to reveal it is someone learning very very important number two let's hurry up what is the second key if you want to actualize destiny are you ready determination don't downplay these keys you are receiving many have trivialized it to the detriment of their destinies determination you must be determined 
to succeed what is determination unbendedness in pursuit that means i am not giving up until i see my destiny become what god showed me in that vision You may weep, but please don't stop till you look just like him. You may cry, but please don't stop till your life looks like him. You may weep, but please don't stop till your life looks like him. You may fall, but please don't stop till you look just like him determination Philippians chapter 3 please and verse 13 unbendedness in pursuit that means you have set your face like a flame 313 Philippians brethren I count not myself to have apprehended he says but this one thing I do you know people of purpose and destiny because at every point in their life there is the one thing they are doing People who do too many things, they are not just busy bodies. Sometimes doing too many things is a revelation of purposelessness. This one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I love this. Next verse. It says, I press. This for me is the definition of determination. I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark. That means nothing will stop me. If God has said there is an entrepreneur, God has said there is a man of God, God has said there is a worship minister to sing his praises to the nations, then I press towards the mark. Can I tell you? determination requires courage because for the most part of your journey you will be alone don't expect people to believe in you at the infancy of your vision and don't blame them if they don't believe in you it is at the end the vision speaks so for the most part of your journey to purpose and destiny you will walk alone but find comfort that though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil for thou not for you people for thou there is just one person you need to verify is he here with me apostle i'm unable to rise because nobody believes in me you are not alone keep moving Apostle, but I think people like you. When did they start liking me? You go and find out. There is nobody who they start liking and clapping for at the beginning. Every vision looks like a failure from the beginning. It takes determination. Your determination will force failure to become success. So don't think it is anything special happening to you. Apostle, this ministry is not working. Whose own do you think worked? People forced it to work. Members don't come to my church. <laughs> my brother, you need to have determination by the Spirit of God. All this free lunch mentality is why we don't have champions in the kingdom. A crave for sympathy and endorsement. You must sustain the courage to walk alone. But when you win, I assure you, you will not clap alone. Can I tell you this? There are few people in life who will be around those who are starting they are called burden bearers and if you've read your bible there are not many that's why i told you to pray for them but i'm telling you you must trust the holy spirit as the chief burden bearer and be sure that if he is there fire on do you know what determination is if i perish i perish many of us have plan b plan c plan to plan z you will not be able to go forward that way. Winners are people who don't have plan B. Lord, I've set my hand on this floor and I will press. Determination. Apostle, but they are laughing at me. Most of the people who are laughing at you will be your strongest witnesses when you become great because they will say, we saw it. I don't like this man, but I can tell you, I saw him. Can I tell you this? I'm praying tonight 
that God will take away this chicken heart of fear. Fear of what people will say. What will people say? Take that thing away and you need a lion's heart if you want to be great. Whether you are Jesus or Satan, people will talk. They talk about Jesus, they talk about Satan. Who are you that you, you are in between somewhere? Whether you backslide, whether you maintain your work, they will still talk about you. Listen, we live in a world that is so obsessed with, it's, it's important to preserve your integrity and all of that, but let me tell you the truth. Don't allow yourself to become a slave to people's opinion. What does God desire for my life? And you fire on. I know God has called me to be a man of God. And someone looks at you and says, now nah, for you, you preach a sermon and for the first time I slept in church. No problem. Let him mock you. Accept it as a positive challenge. Don't fight everybody. You accept it and move forward and say, no problem. After all, Peter too. They tried to pray for somebody and remember what happened? But the time came, his shadow. Everybody said determination. Can I tell you the truth? Get away from that theology that makes you believe that if God is with you, it is just free lunch all the way. Uh -uh. You've heard, it's a popular saying in the body of Christ and it's been so for many years, that faith does not just make things easy. The assignment of faith is to make things possible, not easy. Whether it is easy or not, provided it becomes possible, that is the assignment of faith. Everybody said determination. Now lay your hands on your head again. Don't be tired this night or you are praying. Father, I obtain grace. This fear factor. Oh God, take it out of my life. Give me the heart of a lion. In the name of Jesus. Who said you cannot build the house? In the name of Jesus. Who said you cannot move from a tenant to a landlord? In the name of Jesus. Who said it is in your destiny to suffer for the rest of your life? Who said you cannot rise to the highest peak in your career? Who said you cannot become a man of God with results? Don't let your lack of determination cooperate with naysayers. You need determination. Will you fail? Yes, sir. How many times? As many as your destiny will require. But you have to obtain grace. God is speaking to someone tonight. Shake off that limitation. Shake off the excuses. I obtain grace to be determined. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Go and ask any great man you know today, whether in the secular, whether in ministry, if they are honest enough and they don't want to lie or just flatter you, they will tell you, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Many of us are too fearful to do anything significant. You've been in this Abuja. I know we're talking destiny, but let it adds up to all of these things. You've been in this Abuja 10 years, 20 years. You've not had the courage to go out and even go and look where a plot of land is. And you laugh at yourself and say, no, 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 no. Let me tell you, if you don't take that step of courage, I'm sorry to say it. I don't mean to insult you, but you will die a tenant. Believe me. It takes courage. The signs follow. They don't go before. Most of you who are waiting for things to work, there are times you have to close your eyes and walk on that water. So what if you fall? Jesus is there. He will take responsibility for your obeying him. Everybody say determination. There are many people who come to me for prayer. And most times... And lovingly speaking, I look at these people and they expect some magic to happen just because apostle is praying. No. Many of you, your dreams have been in notebooks for decades and you have left it there. And to your shock, you will watch somebody leaving it out and you will be angry and say, ah, ah, is this not the thing? Because it's not only you that saw it. When the spirit of revelation was distributing those things, his first confess have. Ah, but I saw this business idea. What did you do about it? Someone saw it and got up and said, listen, I don't have a father, mother, but I have the Lord Jesus and let's go. Determination. Let me tell you something, believers. 
and I, we men of God must take responsibility for proposing that kind of message we have taught a there is a dimension of the teaching of faith and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that needs to be balanced when you are teaching people about achievement because of the excellency of the personality of the Holy Spirit and and the the how how powerful the law of faith is we make it look as if the moment you take a step and you are determined if you do fail it is because God is not with you let me tell you this even if an angel appears before you and says I have ordained you to be a real estate champion in Abuja receive the grace you can fall down and roll under the anointing and get up and your first deal can be because there are many things you don't know your first deal can even be a scam and yet you go to God in prayer and God says I, I don't even know what you are talking about all I know is that what I said is still what I've said many believers have this superstitious belief that just because you fail people will come and say this business did you really hear God and you go back in shame and you go back in regret there is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person he says rejoice not over me my enemies it is true that Jesus died but for how many days did he die don't talk about the dead Jesus when he's already back to life imagine that Jesus rose up from the grave and sat there inside the inside the tomb and says I'm angry because everybody ran away from me you better come and carry me out of this place I don't know how many days would have been counting for redemption as soon as he came back to life he had no time the Bible said he rolled the grave clothes and he had he had what to do he did see the disciples and say you guys three days I suffered I was in that tomb alone he had no time for that discussion let me tell you this determine people don't weep for too long if they go through something they can stand learn from it readjust and fire on determine people are those that if one door closes they force another door to open listen don't just don't just be excited for nothing this is what it takes to be a champion in the kingdom determination Apostle, right now, I'm in school. I don't have a father. I don't have a mother. Where will my school fees go from? Just read your book. Start from there. Read your book. If you don't read and the school fees comes two weeks to the exam, you will still fail, even though the miracle has come. Do the part you can do and leave God to do what you cannot do. God will not do what you can do. I don't have the money to buy the land, but do you know where the land is? That one does not require money. Is God challenging you? Apostle, I'm just waiting. I don't know who will give me money. Oh, let me build my church. <laughs> who will give you money? Do you need money to fast? Do you need money to pray? Do you need money to call upon the name of the Lord? Do you need money to carry fire? Start from there. Leave the issue of bills. Start from there. Solve fire first. The fire problem. Then the bill problem will be solved. Number three. Is God speaking to someone? So that respectfully speaking, some of this wrong understanding we have about destiny that just because you are in Christ, you will just be a bed of roses. It's why many, many believers are failures. We pray in tongues, but we still fail. And let me tell you, when you see somebody in a season of pain and failure, don't be too quick to point hands and laugh at the person and say you didn't hear God. Even if the person did not hear God, he honorably fell. In that pain, God will come in his mercy and visit the person. Number three, who is learning tonight? So the first is discovery. The second is determination. The third, are you ready? Go for knowledge. Get wisdom. 
you want to actualize destiny thank God for discovery thank God for the determination the willingness to press in spite of but you need knowledge destiny is knowledge driven destiny is knowledge driven oh this is very important this is very important ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 three scriptures quickly please give it to us ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ready please read one to read the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them why because he knoweth not how to go to the city not because there is no path to the city it is painful to see your destiny and yet not know the requisite level of knowledge every result i have taught you in the kingdom every pathway you need to take there is a requisite level of knowledge wisdom that it takes for you to actualize it now let me tell you the truth it is in this area of accessing knowledge that men are separated from boys because knowledge is not a gift you buy the truth it will cost you we live in a world where we are obsessed with gifts give it to me make it happen why don't you write all the points for my destiny and come and spoon feed me with it unfortunately it does not work like that everybody say buy the truth you must go for knowledge very very important proverbs chapter 24 please from verse 3 and 4 still on the third point go for knowledge get wisdom the bible says through wisdom please give us amplified i love the rendition of amplified of this very scripture proverbs 24 3 and 4 look up please it says through skillful and godly wisdom is a house a life a home a family built and by understanding it is established on a sound and a good foundation next verse through knowledge and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches somebody say knowledge say understanding say wisdom the major the major activity during the preparatory phase of your destiny will be this right there getting wisdom getting knowledge your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise can i tell you this the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1, it says, Through desire, a man, having separated himself, that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. You need to go for knowledge. Buy books before shoes. Get knowledge before you start getting the adorning of clothes. It is painful to look great and yet be empty unfortunately unfortunately we live in a world today that does not mind people can be as empty as a keg and yet you decorate it and it looks so full i rather look i rather look carry a physical fashion that makes you underestimate me and then be full and rich within than to look so successful and visionary and then when you come in you find out that it's an empty gong someone shout god forbid. god forbid can i tell you this you need to invest in knowledge you don't invest in knowledge in a hurry you need to sit down what does it take oh god you are giving me a global ministry as a man of god a global prophetic ministry a global pastoral ministry yes lord i have received it but a global ministry comes with a global burden i need wisdom spirituality leadership organization finances i need to understand this i obtain grace when others are snoring and sleeping away their destiny you are awake 
Lord, I obtain grace. Your eyes are sleepy. It looks like two people are sitting on your eyes. You shake it away and say, no way. I'm going far. I obtain grace. May the spirit of laziness be far from us. In the name of Jesus, may the spirit, the destiny destroying spirit of laziness may be far from us. There are many people who will tell you they want to be preachers. They don't even read up to one hour per week. I'm telling you sincerely, even if there are no demons, you will still fail. <laughs> because demons are not the only, demons only account for about 20% or so of real failure. A major part of failure is ignorance or insufficient knowledge. I've taught you here, if you scored 35%, you didn't get zero and yet you still failed. Is that true? If the cutoff mark is 50 and you get 48, you didn't get zero, but you will still stand at the same place with those who got zero. Take away shame from your life by investing in knowledge. It is not good to look dull and be dull. Now, I'm not saying this mocking you. Knowledge is, a, is an equalizer. You may not come from a privileged family, I agree. You may not have a personal that is very inviting and you know, but let knowledge equalize you. It's a bailout system. Take away shame from your life and stop all the petty jealousy and sit down. Go for knowledge. I don't speak English very well, I agree. I may not be as beautiful or handsome as people would want to be. I may not be like that celebrity, but the one God gave you, your brain is healthy. Use it. In the name of Jesus, sit down. Buy books. Don't go online just browsing profitless things that will not. I've told you this thing and I've said it with, with the sincere heart of a shepherd. Not to pry into your privacy. I am telling you, most people, the time, if they take half the time they use, roaming around social media in a profitless way and invest it in constructive knowledge, I assure you by God, they will not remain at that level. Some of you know what is happening in everybody's life except your own destiny. That should not be. Are we together? Say, I receive grace to go for knowledge. Apostle, what do I learn about? You see, when you know where you are going, you now find out those who are going that direction and you begin to study their mindsets and study the first kind of knowledge you need is the awareness of your current state that itself is a miracle do you know that if you if you are aware that you are in need that knowledge of your inadequacy is already a miracle are we together not knowing that you have a problem is a serious problem itself Follow them who through faith and patience. What did they study? God has called you to be a kingdom financier. You can be jumping till rapture happens and you miss out your assignment and even miss rapture if you are not careful. And yet you, they, you, you know, we talk is cheap. I, I'm saying this with, with, with uh, I, hope, I hope I'm not, um, I, I hope we're still friends. Please sit down. Please sit down. Go back home and sit down. Carry your Bible and look for one book. Apostle, I'm in ministry. What book should I get? Even if you don't know it, at least go to a bookstore. Just roam around there and see. Holy Ghost, I'm now here. I left my house and the Holy Spirit will take you somewhere. I don't have money, oh, at least search. Nobody will query you for searching around. And somebody will come and say, you look like a determined young man. You are looking at that book. It's a nice book. I read it. Pick it up. You'll get both a relationship and favor because you took a step.
go for knowledge till today i study like i don't know anything because truly without flattery with respect to where god is taking me there are many things i do not know and so i sit down and i study i study i study study to show yourself approved unto god is that in your bible a workman please let me tell you this if you are a man of god i submit to you with all due respect forget about you be ready for empty pews if you are not rich in knowledge the generation the world we live in today is the world of serious people a man will not carry his wife and children and their destiny and come and be part of your vision and sit down every week to listen to nonsense no people love you but they love their destinies nobody is ready to waste his time like that to travel from one nation to come and let me also challenge everyone career people please in the name of jesus go for knowledge go for knowledge find out what you don't know about and find out how to learn from it don't make the same mistake two times Apostle, I'm broke. Do you know how to be rich? Eh, listen to one message like that. Is it fair that you just carelessly listen to a 20-minute message and actually believe you should be a millionaire from it? Whereas people, people who have been working even in the civil service for 30 years are still struggling to stand and you just cheapen life like that. No. There are many of us who do not know the real cost of being great. We have downplayed the cost of greatness and reduced it just because of things like favor. Don't forget, by the grace of God, the person talking to you, I understand favor. Wave laziness goodbye and force it to wave you back. That you, you stand in the name of Jesus, some of you from this night, gather if i come to your house i don't don't show me the cars and the houses those things are transitory let me see what you're doing with your mind let me see let you can be in that one room with that trouser that is as cheap as whatever with people laughing at you don't worry show me what you are doing and i can tell you where you are going there are many many young people in our nation who are not going anywhere they believe that destiny will just open up because of a bold face. It takes more than that. It takes capacity. Everybody say knowledge. Everybody say wisdom. And can I tell you this? In pursuit of destiny, if God ever by any means makes the job easier for you by granting you access to the minds of those who know what they are saying, please don't trivialize it. Listen. Don't sit down with a champion and be tampering the equation. You are not there yet. You don't have the results. You see, for some people, it is not the absence of helpers or knowledge. It is sheer pride. Africa, for instance. You find people who have no result. They are broke. They are poor. They are oppressed. They have no anointing. They have no influence. Yet they want to teach you on everything pertaining influence, anointing, prosperity. Let's respect results. Are we together? When I sit in the presence of people who have what I do not have, I don't argue. Even if I don't entirely agree, I have to honor the presence of the results that is before me and listen. Number, number four. Are you ready? The fourth key, spend time praying for your life and your destiny that is the fourth key you want to actualize destiny you must spend time invest time in fact that's the word invest time praying for your life and your destiny oh may god help you believe this thing i'm teaching in the name of jesus christ you must spend time praying for your life it's good to intercede i've taught you on intercession it's good to pray for people but there are times you have to honestly zoom the attention on you and your destiny and invest time generate energy praying for your life and praying for your destiny apostle but i thought you were praying for me 
I will continue to pray for you as a man of God. But even Jesus is praying for you. Even for those who are suffering, he's interceding for them too. If you don't take responsibility over your destiny and pray till you tear off the gates. Listen, especially for those of you, if you come from a background where you know that you are the first to do what you are about to do, you are the one who breaks the iron gate. You better pray. You better pray. Grandfather tried it and died. Grandmother tried it and died. Siblings tried it and died. Now you are the one that iron gate has never been broken. You must pray. The one who is grandfather or grandmother at least open part of the gate. It's just for him to finish opening it. That one's life is easier. For you there is a chain on it and there is a spirit holding the chain. Lord, I will not fail in life. Days become weeks. Weeks become months. What are you doing? I am praying. You are just lazying around. Don't call prayer lazying around. There is vision and purpose connected to it. Somebody say, I will pray. One more time, say, I will pray. Matthew chapter 4, please, from verse 1. This is Jesus preparing to begin his ministry. Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil the Bible says next verse when he had what fasted 40 days and 40 nights you would think that because he was Jesus he had already listen look at Jesus he discovered already his place he was determined to fulfill it he had spent time getting knowledge from age 12 he was in the temple and you would think just because he had acquired knowledge it was over the bible says he prayed and fasted 40 days and 40 nights and not even hunger stopped him i don't know any great man i may be wrong i'm learning too but i don't know any great man especially in the kingdom and in ministry who cannot point seasons of his life where he fasted the kind of fast that even the devil will look with shock and say, ah, this person, you have energy. And it's easier to fast when you have not made it yet. That's why it's good to, because all the distractions are less. How much do you have that temptation will come? You, you focus and fast. Yes, sir. Whether you fasted or not, you were not even going to eat very well after all. So you, you use the opportunity. You are praying, giving yourself an excuse. Are we together? Mark chapter 1, please. Mark chapter 1 from verse 35. Mark chapter 1, 35. This was Jesus after a busy day. He had started ministry. So we see him praying even before ministry would start. Now ministry started already and he was doing so well. Morning till night, busy schedules. And the Bible says in the morning, rising up a great while. Everybody say discipline. Hmm. He went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. There prayed you must pray there are forces that will try to fight you from starting if they cannot succeed they will be waiting for you at the gate of honor so that they will bring you shame don't you think because you started the devil will fold his arms the bible said he left jesus for a season every great man here listen let me tell you if you think because you are great and everything is working everything is fine think again go and ask there is a skill that maintains greatness one of it is the consistent fortification of yourself with prayer people are praying for you but you must pray for yourself because when satan sees that you are high up there he will begin to scheme things to make sure because he knows that in your coming down is the coming down of many so instead of attacking two million people he will attack you there are battles that you have no business fighting but when you become great is a battle that must involve you please obtain grace to pray everybody say i will pray 
Apostle, thank God me, I'm not in ministry, I'm just in business. Pray more. The king of Tyre is sitting where you are there. That is his headquarters. Have you heard about Tyre and Sidon? Tyre and Sidon. You must pray. The devil will not commit millions and billions to your hands when he knows that your heart is already inclined to the kingdom. Now, go and ask people who practice occultism. Before they become wealthy, they come under all kinds of oaths. Oaths with blood incisions to say, listen, these are the do's and don'ts as far as using this money is concerned. You can't, there are wealthy people today who cannot give you more than 10,000. They are not greedy. It is based on the oath that brought that wealth. To the point that even their physical parents or siblings can be in the hospital, deathbed, but they are not allowed to bring that money you think they are greedy it is the condition that was given to them that's why the bible says the blessing of the lord make it rich and adds no sorrow are we together spend time praying first thessalonians chapter 3 second thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 second thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 finally brethren pray for us that the word of the lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you verse 2 and that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith do not assume that just because everybody is laughing at or laughing with you they mean you well this is a world that is full of wickedness the bible says this world is a habitation of cruelty are we together why must this family be rising why must this man of god be rising why must this sister be rising why must this politician be rising why must this career person be rising look at jesus innocently bringing glory to the father and a few people came together and said, look, we have to do something about this man. He's stealing our show. Oh, but prayer is powerful. You can get into that control room and begin to make things. He said, has thou commanded thy morning? Please obtain grace to pray for your destiny. In the name of Jesus, invest time praying. Invest time praying. Invest time praying. Don't pray out of fear pray as a not just as a principle of survival but your prayer will give room for you to keep making progress number five are you ready is god helping us tonight let's hurry up number five embrace a life of competence and excellence point number five you want to actualize destiny you must embrace a life of competence and excellence three scriptures very quickly proverbs 22 29 popular scripture embrace a life of competence and excellence it says seest thou a man diligent in his business leaves you with an assurance he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before average ordinary or mean men you want to rise beyond the average in life and destiny for the sake of the kingdom you must be diligent a diligent preacher will be a great preacher a diligent businessman will be a great businessman a diligent politician will be a great politician everybody say competence what is competence mastery we just finished a series on striving for mastery listen to it again you must become a master at something otherwise shame and reproach will always be within the corridor of your destiny make up your mind that you are not given the assignment of being and knowing everything but as far as the things that pertain to the area of your call and destiny is concerned please hold it with mastery and take away shame from your life genesis chapter 41 We'll jump the verses because of time. Give us verse 14. And then we'll jump to 29. Down to 33. 
and then 37 we're jumping we're examining the life of joseph ready 14 then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came unto pharaoh to 29 now 29 to 33 behold there come seven years of plenty he's interpreting the king's dream now throughout all the land of egypt we're reading to 33 uh-huh next verse and there shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of egypt and the famine shall consume the land 31 and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following for it shall be very grievous two more verses and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass the last verse and then we'll jump to 37 now therefore look at him bringing a solution now let pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants next verse and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of god is next verse and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown thee all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ that we will search and search and honestly come to the conclusion that you are truly exceptional that we will say your kind is rare in the name of jesus christ next verse please and pharaoh okay thou shalt be over my house and according unto my word shall all my people be ruled look at instant honor that came because of competence and excellence it says only in the throne will i be greater than thou next verse we're reading to 46 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bowed the knee and made him ruler over all the land of egypt three more verses and pharaoh said to joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of egypt look at this and pharaoh called joseph's name zavnath pania and he gave him to wife asenath the daughter of potiphar the priest of on and joseph went out over all the land of egypt last verse and joseph was how old And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before the king of Egypt when they put the ring when Joseph began to do exploits at a national level he was 30 years old that means there is no excuse and for those of you who are saying ah 30 years okay that's old what of Joash who was king at age eight josiah king at age nine they were all kings as small as they were a child is not just a child in age a child is a child in knowledge are we together now yes you must embrace a life of competence and excellence two more number six am i right on that number six be disciplined and focused this is a big one i can spend the entire night dealing with this issue of discipline and focus there is no glorious destiny for any man and any woman that will compromise on the power of discipline and focus isaiah chapter 50 please isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7 
let's hurry up media 50 and verse 7 isaiah for the lord will help me therefore i shall not be confounded therefore i have set my face like a flint and i know that i shall not be ashamed second timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 second timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 it says no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier he's given an impression that if you make up your mind that you are a soldier then you have to adopt the, the discipline of a military man hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 hebrews 12 and verse 1 wherefore seeing also that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside say lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with patience the race that is set before us there are two things he says to lay aside sin and weight you can lay aside sin and not lay aside weight weight is anything that is unnecessary as far as the journey is concerned there are many good things in your life you must be able to cut away from you don't have to cut away from evil things alone there are many good things that are not profitable for your destiny are we together yes sir there are many good things you are going to have to say no to for the sake of where you are going many good things that you have to say no to number seven and that will lead me into a very important subtopic and then we'll pray are you ready the seventh point if you want to actualize destiny you must develop endurance you must develop endurance I will define for you what endurance is you must develop endurance are you ready i define endurance as the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus endurance the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus endurance the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus this one key here dear people of god if you have six over seven and this is the key you failed you will still abort destiny strangely endurance james chapter one James chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3. James chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3. My brethren, he says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, verse 3, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. In fact, let's read verse 4. It says, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing everybody say endurance there are two reasons i have seen why people generally in spite of the fact that they work in keeping with these other keys while they are unable to really maximize destiny and become all that god has ordained them to be number one is excuses they will always give excuses and you see to one who is determined to find a reason not to rise you will always find one excuses and then number two the second reason is violating the law of process i want to end my teaching tonight by teaching us something about the law of process please open up your heart and open your spirit because for some of you this will be an answer right now to your prayer are you ready to pray one more time lord open my eyes yet again open my eyes for the sake of my destiny 
for the sake of all those who are looking up to me make sure you are praying those following online azaria family and those connecting across the globe make sure your heart is open pray let it be from the depth of your heart open my eyes hallelujah write this down as a subtopic the law of process I need to teach you this very quickly mark chapter 4 please mark chapter 4 many great people from verse 26 have aborted destiny because they do not understand this mystery of the kingdom called process and he said so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground next verse next verse media let's work together and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not how 28 now for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself but how does it happen first the blade is it in your bible then the ear after that the full corn in the air we're reading to 32 but when the fruit is brought forth immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come 30 and he said whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of god or with what comparison shall we compare it it is like the grain of mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth last verse but when it is sown it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it i had the privilege of learning this deep law of destiny very early in life the law of process write this down please everyone you must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God you must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God Deuteronomy chapter 8 we're looking at scriptures from verse 11 you must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God there is nobody who will taste of genuine kingdom honor as far as destiny and the kingdom is concerned until and unless you are tested and you are proven. We we'll begin our reading from verse 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command you this day lest when thou hast eaten and art full and art built goodly houses and dwell therein and when thy herds and flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied 14 then thy heart shall be lifted up this is why god needs to test and prove people it's a tendency in the heart of all men without exception and forget the Lord thy God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage 15 who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents scorpions drought where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint 16 it says who fed thee let's read 16 together ready one to read who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not why that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to what end to do thee good at thy latter end let me tell you sincerely god tests people god proves people even men prove people before they lift them there is no responsible man there is no responsible leader there is no responsible father who will not test and prove people to ascertain 
their capacity and their capabilities before lifting them and even their tendencies you must be tested and psalm 66 verse 12 psalm 66 and verse 12 thou hast caused men to ride over our heads <laughs> we went through fire and through water but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place but before we got there you caused men to ride over our heads we went through fire and we went through water which one is better fire or water <laughs> Are we together? It's like saying, which one is better? To die by shooting or to die by an arrow? All of them will cause something to your body and you will still die. You cause men to ride over our heads. We went through water and through fire. But the same you brought us into a wealthy place process is very powerful there will always be seasons in a man's life where God will be proving you to prune every tendency that can destroy and abort your glorious future and let me tell you the truth that is about the hardest face in the life of a believer because at those points I taught you this already that is when you experience what we call the silence of God you will live in the silence of God once and again and if you do not understand that you are being proven you will waste that season and you will find out that the destiny that was prophesied over you would never even come to pass number two the second thing you have to know about process is that it takes time for true success and your destiny to manifest no matter how you hurry destiny it takes time for true success and it takes time for destiny to manifest hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. i want us to read it in concert when we see it displayed everyone ready please look up one to read and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise the he being abraham and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise what does process do in your life I want to give you about four or so reasons and then we'll end it and pray for tonight about four or five reasons are you ready number one why do I have to go through process with God number one process tests your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny process will test your loyalty and your commitment not just to God your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny are you that determined to make it process will test and even prune your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny Luke chapter 9 please and verse 62 Luke 9 62 and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God process no matter what it takes that in the name of Jesus Christ I have set my face on the like a flint and I will push through it may be gradual but I must become that kingdom financier it may be gradual but I must become that man of God number two what does process achieve in your life process builds patience process builds patience James chapter 1, 2, and 3. We read that already. Please just write it down for sake of time. There are many people 
who it takes the discipline of process to bring them to a point where they can become patient in life we live in a generation of impatience fast everything we want it immediately sharp sharp and while it is true that god is a god of speed there is a difference between speed and rush god gives people speed after he has made them and built them but god does not rush people are we together isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2 very popular scripture it says fear not i have redeemed you i have called you by name thou art mine verse 2 i love verse 2 so much it says when thou passest through water i will be with you when thou passest through the river it shall not overflow you but when it gets to fire it didn't say where you pass where you run he said where you walk why do i need to walk through fire abba god is enough that i'm there i thought i would rush out because that fire has an assignment to roast many things a way out of your life there are things water cannot remove <clears throat> there are things even the strength of the river cannot remove it will take fire and let me tell you when you are walking through that fire not even your tears will accelerate the pace you will walk slowly it will burn pride it will burn every kind of thing you will get to a point where when you get out of that fire you will be as light as a feather ready to fly some of you you are in that fire right now it is not always a demonic attack the anointing of the holy spirit was designed to fight satan not god so sometimes when you are praying and asking the anointing to fight and it's not fighting certain things it may be because it is not satan the anointing does not fight god process process you walk through fire three members six months two years three members you are angry you are offended you are saying even the people i raised now they have mega churches and god says stay i know what i'm doing when you walk through fire let me speak to someone here you may be in a season where you are fulfilling the law of process don't abort destiny obtain the grace to stay there is something that fire is doing and when it is done there is nobody who is a normal human being who will carry raw meat even if you go to the bush and you kill meat nobody will come to a restaurant just to sit down and start eating raw meat you just share a raw cow and people are just eating no it will pass through fire when you get to the kitchen in any restaurant it is hot there is no kitchen that is cold because that is where food is prepared did you hear me there is no kitchen in any restaurant that is cold the signature of any kitchen even if you are blind you will know you are in the kitchen because of fire several things on fire and while it is on fire the chef is laughing and those who need to eat they are waiting impatiently and they do not know that is fire that is responsible for their satisfaction fire they place that meat there they turn it they turn it back again they add something and turn it again and while that is happening something else is in the pot cooking and boiling and the man is laughing and it starts to change shape others change color others change texture many things happen under fire can i tell you nobody goes through fire and comes out the way you enter no no for some of you the fire will change your shape for some of you the fire will change your color spiritually for some of you the fire will change your appetite my encouragement is let the fire do its work let the fire do its work let the fire do its work it may be painful the fire may come as a temporal lack of finances let the fire do its work the fire may be having several certificates and yet it does not seem to bring you anything i'm telling you sometimes it's not the devil let the fire do its work there is good waiting for you at the end dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages 
subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline